Okay, so um, I, moving along in the niyamas, um, svadhyaya. I don't. I'm not really sure if that's how you pronounce it correctly. I am by no means a Sanskrit scholar, um, but basically, it means svadhyaya means study of the self, <clears throat> and it really is this sense of, <clears throat> excuse me, um, coming to the understanding that at our core we are divine consciousness, and there are so many things. <laughs> that layer upon, hold on, let me just quiet the screen up here. Um, okay, there are, there are so many ways that we uh, overlay our divine consciousness. Um, you know, we have our ego, obviously, this is a big one, right? And our belief systems, our conditioning, our experiences, um, all these things that kind of just get cultivated right from the moment we're born. Um, we start to have a development of, of these ways of seeing the world and compartmentalizing the world and seeing ourselves. And it's uh, through these um, belief systems and conditioning, we, we start to identify ourselves in a certain way. And this is where the ego really starts to form strongly. And we also start to you know, figure out what we want to avoid, what we want to attach to, what we're afraid of. Um, what we desire, uh, what our dreams are, all these things are, are very much interrelated to um, this sense of, uh, you know, cultivating our belief systems. <clears throat> so the challenge, of course, this is just our human condition, and it's good. We, we need to have our ego. We need to have our belief systems. It helps us navigate the world. But the challenge of it is that we get so overlaid with all of these things that we forget that our true nature is divine consciousness. And you can fill in those words however you want to. Um, <clears throat> we always start to see through our lens that we're constantly developing. So how can we discover what is truth when we you know, don't really have a, a clear um, screen that we're looking through, that we're always looking through our ego and our belief systems. So it's very difficult to identify what truth is and who we are in our truth. Um, so the process of Svadhyaya is to kind of clear away some of those um, smoke screens so that we can really uh, relate and um, sit within our true nature. Um, the kleshas, which you know, I think I've sprinkled a lot of them throughout the yamas and yamas because they're very much related. <clears throat> the kleshas are the root causes of our suffering. This is all laid out in the Yoga Sutra. And one of the kleshas is our attachment to our ego and our forgetting that we are connected to all beings everywhere. Um, and we forget our true nature, that we are divine consciousness. So um, this gets us into a whole lot of trouble, right? So we have this nesting doll effect where how do we kind of uncover what's pure? Um, I read a parable about a, a boy at a river with his father and, and the river's a very polluted river. And, and the boy asks his father if, um, if the river is, is the, is the river polluted? And the father says, no, the river is pure. It's just carrying pollutants. And we often forget that we are the pure river. We kind of identify ourselves with everything that's moving in the river instead of just with the, the river itself. So um, as a little ex exercise, um, Without think, I don't want you to think, I just want you to kind of like quickly stream of conscious, um, write down five things that describe the world as you see it. So, you know, just how you, how you uh, can describe the world. Now, five things, and then everybody let me know when you're ready. Give me a thumbs up on your screen. Yeah, I see one thumbs up. Yeah, see, I got you, Maggie. I see it. Um, see Ruth's thumb up, thumbs up. And um, you can either put it on your screen or just uh, show, show me that you've got it. <clears throat> okay. 
just about everybody is giving me a little bit of thumbs up here. Laura, are you you good? Still working? She's still working. She's a deep thinker that Laura is. There we go. <laughs> okay, so um, take a look at your list and you don't need to say anything about the list to me or anyone else. But as you look at what you wrote, recognize that because we're seeing through our own lens, really what you wrote is tells more about yourself than it does about the world. So this is a, a way to, this shines just a teeny bit of a light on what your belief systems are. <clears throat> and we often can say, oh, I have a belief in this, but really we don't, <laughs> right? Like we have a belief in this, right? So sometimes even our belief systems are outside of our consciousness. So part of Svadhyaya is to really kind of uncover what are these deeper root belief systems that we have about ourselves. So there's a few practices in yoga that can help us with this. So first of all, meditation. Um, if you don't have a regular meditation practice, I think if you start, um, or those of you who do, we all recognize that you're not just going to have a cessation of your thought process, but what is going to start happening is you're going to develop the witness a little bit more. You're going to be able to reside slightly outside the ego where you can observe self as um, just, you know, as the witness observing yourself. Meditation allows us to notice what our tendencies are, to notice what the stream of conscious that is kind of playing in the background is. And if we um, practice, we start to feel that we can separate the um, flotsam in the river from the river itself. So we develop a non-attachment to our thought processes. Um, we develop a sense of not knowing uh, that quality of the beginner's mind. And this is very good. And it's murky, right? Anyone who's had a meditation practice knows that there's fits and starts and there's good days and there's bad days and there's frustration about how difficult it is to quiet the mind. But really, it's just a matter of noticing, paying attention and being that witness. So the other thing you can do is um, when you feel like you're getting annoyed, by someone or some experience, anything, try to trace whatever disharmony you're feeling, you know, whatever turbulence is happening in yourself. See if you can trace it back to whatever conditioning or belief system that you have. So, um, you know, the, the sense of what bothers you is really about you and what bothers other people is not about you. Um, it's about them. So when something bothers you, instead of saying, oh, I hate when that happens or I don't like that attitude or I don't like that behavior of that other person, can you put the mirror on it and reflect it back to yourself and notice that the disturbance is really coming from um, that something's meeting up against your belief system or your conditioning. And so perhaps the, the solution for it isn't to um, get upset about the other person, but to try to broaden what's happening there in your understanding of what the truth of the matter is. And then, I, you know, the last thing, a couple of things is just noticing your ego, you know, and what ways do you attach to your sense of self-identity? Um, <clears throat> how do you prop yourself up? How does the ego lead in your life? Um, and just noticing there's nothing that needs to change. These are all just a sense of witnessing and noticing, turning inward and studying self. And then lastly, um, look where you're afraid to look. So um, the things that you avoid in your own mind, um, or even, you know, turning away from the homeless person that's got the sign of the red light, whatever, um, whatever you don't want to look at in yourself or in the world, have the courage. And this is where, you know, the other niyamas really start to play in that tapas that we talked about yesterday, the ability to be able to be in difficult sensations. Um, use that skill to help you um, look at what you don't want to look at. And you can learn a lot about ourselves about ourselves through these practices. And you know, remember the ultimate goal is to remember that we are divine and that everyone around us is divine as well, and that we are all connected. And um, this is really the goal is to, to seek that understanding and, and know it. Okay, so let's go ahead. Somebody wrote something in the chat. Does this mean there's never room for acknowledging a truly bad behavior from another? No, 
always there's room for acknowledging truly bad behavior from another. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, can you hold boundaries? Can you recognize bad behavior? Of course. Um, but when it disturbs you, um, I read something in the Stoics book I had recently about when you are disturbed by someone else or someone else gets a rise out, out of you, you know, like if you take the bait and you bite uh, on someone's hook, um, that you are equally responsible for what just happened as the person who baited you. Uh, so this is, doesn't mean that the other person is off the hook. It just means that you also have, it's an interplay, it's an exchange. So um, owning your own aspect of that, uh, and that could mean that you just need to create a boundary. Okay, so let's sit up straight and tall and take a moment to um, <clears throat> drop in. So lastly, our asana practice, this gift of interoception, the ability to perceive what's happening on the inside is truly a gift of svadhyaya, this self-knowledge. So when you start to identify with the bodily sensations of emotions, when you start to notice the turbulence and seek its root quickly, um, our yoga, our physical asana practice supports our capacity to know ourselves in this way. So take a moment to drop in to the body. The body doesn't lie. The body is so complicated and complex, but it's so much less complicated and complex than the mind. So see if you can feel the purity of bodily sensations. What are you feeling right now? Can you identify sensations in your body? And it could be um, that you feel racy in your mind, you know, that it's difficult to be in the body. It could be that you have um, pain somewhere, something kind of talking very loudly to you. So as you acknowledge sensations, See if when you acknowledge, if something else kind of rises up from a deeper layer. Go deeply into the breath now. See if you can feel the way the breath feels the entire route of taking the beginning of an inhale. Observing it move through your trachea and your lungs and moving out again on your out breath. Pay attention to the movement of your diaphragm. Relax the shoulders. Melt through your skull. Feel a sense of ease come through your face. Touch in with a part of your body that you have not reached yet. Maybe it's somewhere low down in your body or in the back of your body. Say hello, welcome sensation. Place your hands together at your heart. Drop your chin down. See if you can offer an intention. Maybe it has something to do with kind of uncovering the true light within. Let it be the guiding light through your day. Release the hands. And let's find our way onto our back. 
So a lot of times when we start in um, with a yoga practice, with an asana practice, try to remember back to when you um, maybe had your very first yoga class where you did some asana or just an early experience if you don't remember that class. Um, and just, was there something that you learned early on um, that was kind of remarkable? Like some understanding or presence within your body that was new. Let's stretch our arms overhead. And we can have that new beginner's mind, that new beginning every time we step onto our mat. So even though a lot of what we do is repetitive, we've done these poses before. What do you find that's fresh and new in your body right now as you stretch one leg? What is the sensation that you get as you stretch the other? What is the sensation that you receive? Let's try to release judgments or expectations, but just reside in sensation. Bring the knees into the chest. Rock around a little bit, swaying from side to side. Breathing well. Circle the knees and roll one direction. Rolling the other direction. Feel into your sacrum. Find the sense of ease. So now hold your arms straight so that your fingers are, you know, holding your knees, but your arms are straight and your legs. See what you can do to completely surrender your femur bones. And notice the feeling of your femur bones in your hip joint. And then we're going to open the knees away from the midline, out, away from each other. So spread, uh, separate your legs out and then bring them back in. And pay attention. Obviously, you might have um, some muscles that talk to you quickly, like maybe your inner thighs are a little snug. But also notice the joint itself. A lot of times um, we have parts of our bodies that speak loudly, quickly. Uh, and then they can sometimes overpower the quieter voice. So See if you can start listening for the quieter voices um, in your body. And that's not to say ignore the loud voices. Loud voices are loud for a reason often. So if there's something you need to shift and change, shift and change it. Right knee comes in, left leg long on the ground and move your ankles about. And we do this all the time, right? So can you be mindful? Can you be fully present for the sensation of when you roll your ankles? Where do you feel this? Can you feel it in your shin, your calf, all the way in your feet? You know, what's the, what's the goodness that you're receiving, the awakeness that you're receiving? Change sides, bring the left knee in, the right leg comes long on the ground. Feel a good squeeze in the knee. Stretch your right leg long. Wiggle your toes and move your ankles again. Notice the spine. Notice the weight of your head. Notice your breath. There's so many things you could notice. I don't know how anybody could ever get bored looking inside their body. There's so many things to observe. Okay, and then relax that leg. Grab onto your strap. Okay, we're going to bring um, the strap around your right foot. Okay, lift that leg. Jamie, I always think of you when I do this pose. I don't know, at some point in your life, you must have told me you really liked this posture because it imprinted in me that I think of you. So here's a pose for Jamie and for the rest of us. So reach your right foot straight up in the air and then drop your right hip down, down, down. Find the two opposing directions where you have this sense of length and space through your whole leg. Feel into the femur bone socket again, that hip joint. See what it feels like to move the head of your femur bone away from the shoulder a little bit in that joint, drop it into the ear. Flex and point your toe while your toes while you're here and notice the zing that might go down your calf. Okay, let's take the strap into the right hand and open up out to the right. Feeling that sense of opening in your inner thigh, but also in the hip joint itself. Are you noticing the external rotation and the abduction? Can you get a little heavier in your head? Can you get a little weightier in your shoulders? 
And just enjoy the simple act of stretching. Allow the muscles to awaken in their um, stretch fibers. It's such a good sensation. I hope you like the sensation of stretching. And then reach that leg straight back up. We're going to take the strap into the left hand, cross the right leg over to the left, have the heel of your right hand in the hip, right hip crease, and manually feel that femur bone drop down away from the shoulder, kind of nestling it in the back side of the joint a little bit. Once you have that space in there, activate through your leg, stretch through your heel, feel the fullness of that long leg. Feel the weight of your head and shoulders again. Big breaths. And then inhale, bring that leg back up. And then lower the leg back down onto the ground. And then we'll change sides. Before you do, just notice the difference in how you feel in your two sides. Do you have a different sensation? So, you know, what is truth? Um, our perceptions just shift constantly, right? So do you have a greater awareness of body in your right versus your left? When you're ready, left knee comes into the chest and then wrap the strap around your left foot. And now open up through your leg there. And remember your other leg, your right leg, your foot can be on the floor with your knee bent or your whole leg can be on the ground, whichever works for your body. Shoulders are heavy, head is heavy. Feel the reach upward through the foot. Feel the root downward through the hip. Nestle the femur bone back. Feel free to flex and point here for a bit if you like to have that feeling of opening up the hamstring and calf a little bit more. A nice way of doing this, of course, is with the strap, but if you ever want to be even more restful, you can sit inside a door frame so that your left leg would be against the wall and your right leg would be going through the doorway. Um, that's a nice way of practicing this in a very passive way as well. Take the strap into the left hand. We're gonna open up the leg out to the left. Feel the grounding of your right thigh bone. So we're not uh, allowing ourselves to just tip over sideways. We have that sense of stability in the body, uh, grounding. So we're only allowing the hip to open to a place where the, the body allows. Can you let the head get heavy again? Can you still nestle the femur bone down a little bit in the joint instead of hiking it up toward the rim of the pelvis? And then lift that leg straight back up in the air. Take the strap into the right hand and we're gonna cross the left leg past the midline over to the right. Left hand in the, in the crook of your hip. So just nestle it in that uh, crease, press away. So you have a little gap in that femur bone or, or in the hip joint, I should say. And then once you have that space, press into your leg, stretch into your heel, stretch out through the big toe and the inner heel. Melt your head again. And then come back up. And then release that leg down onto the ground. Just notice that sense of uh, awakening in your lower body. Let's stretch open to a star reach and lengthen. Feel the wiggling of your fingers and your toes. Exhale, draw everything in toward the center. Hug. Inhale again, big and spacious and wide. And then exhale, and the knees come in and the head comes up. All right, relax your head onto the ground. Let's roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and knees. All right, so feeling your way through some cat cows, you might notice, um, you know, if you're very much paying attention to the sensations of the body, you might notice a part of your spine that has a little more difficulty with mobility. Maybe one part of your spine feels especially free. See if you can just give awareness to what's happening. Notice the movement of the pelvis, the movement of the rib cage, the shoulder blades, the head, all the, and even the collarbones, all the places that kind of connect in with the movement of the spine. 
Feel free to move any way you want. You can wag your tail, you can circle your pelvis, you can move your rib cage about, move your head, your neck, your shoulders, anything that's going to help you kind of come home inside yourself. Remember, we're trying to receive this awareness of self. It's interoception, noticing where we are in our bodies. Okay. And then drop back into child's pose. Walk the hands forward and feel the shoulders begin to stretch open. Release the skull. Maybe your forehead touches the ground, maybe it doesn't. Notice the spine move with your breath. Let's go ahead and walk your hands over to one side or the other. You know, how are you feeling today versus different days? Is your is the quality of your thinking mind, your emotional states, are they impacting your physical body in any specific way today? Maybe you feel really rested, you had a good night's sleep and your body feels good. Maybe you had a terrible night's sleep and therefore you don't feel as well. So just notice, the impact of the mind and the emotions on the body. Walk the other side. Drop some weight into the pelvis. Relax your neck. If you're struggling with a sense of low energy or with anxiety, what can you do to be aware of how that's impacting your body and shift something to support yourself? Maybe your breath needs to change. Come back up onto all fours, <clears throat> curl the toes under, and find your way to dog pose. Pedal your feet. Hopefully, some of the opening of our legs that we did earlier will help you feel good in dog pose. So some pedaling if you want to. And then feel the yielding here. Yielding is one of our greatest acts of presence that we can do in our asana practice sink your weight into the earth. What does that feel like? And then rise out of the earth and feel the extension through your body. What does that feel like? You have both happening simultaneously where we root and rise. We yield and reach. How's the breath? <clears throat> Melt the skull as much as you can. And then walk your feet forward, come into Uttanasana, let your head relax and melt. See if you can dangle your head, let it uh, get as free as possible. So if you were trying to release any tension from that pure river, what can let go in your skull right now? Inhale for a halfway lift. Stretch your body longer and straighter. And then exhale and release again. Drop your seat, rise up. Bring your arms to the sky. A big open chest. Lift your heart upward. Notice the impact of a lifted heart. What does it do for your energy, for your mind? I am breathing well. Right, let's cactus open. Let's hug the shoulder blades toward each other. And then relax and bring your forearms toward each other in the front. Tuck your chin one more time. Arms come up and wide. Feel the back body squeeze. And then exhale, round the back body, chin toward chest, forearms to touch. Reach the arms up and a big swan dive forward. Relax your head. Inhale for a halfway lift. Spine gets long. Exhale and melt. Let's take our feet wide to the edges of the mat and come to a squat. Okay, so just notice, do you tend to lean your weight into one foot more than the other foot? Do you like to drop your hips way down? See where you can be in a comfortable way. Spread out the, bo the bones in your feet, extend through your spine. Just opening up those inner thighs a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna inhale and rise all the way up, a standing star. Find the breath. Heel toe your feet a little bit closer back together, and then exhale and fold forward. Let your neck be soft and relaxed. A halfway lift, spine grows. 
Melt and step your left foot back. Right foot is now forward. Come to a lunge. All right, let's begin to stretch and breathe. So exhale, inhale, however you like. We're straightening the front knee and then bending the front knee. Finding your breath. Place your back knee down onto the ground so that you feel and uncurl your toes. Feel that opening through the front of your hip. And you curl the toes back under, lift that femur bone off the ground, swoop your arms up, find that sense of a big open heart. If it's comfortable to lean back a little bit, do so, but only to the place where you can support with your core. So we're not sinking and arching into our low back, but we have that sense that the thoracic spine can open. Lift the head of your heart, lift it up toward the sky. And then release your hands down onto the ground. Back foot comes forward and fold. Relax your neck. Halfway lift again. Start to feel to feel your body opening, being more free. Relax and melt. Step your right foot back. Left foot is forward. Lunge. Are you in the presence of your body? Are you in the presence of your divine consciousness? And in yoga, it's called the Atman. Uh, A-T-M-A-N, the sense of uh, divine consciousness. I don't, you know, there's many words you can use for it. I think you'll all understand. And this is our true nature. So allow some of the uncovering to start happening as you breathe, as you move. Can you give such um, respect and honoring to the body, to your mind? So drop some weight into your lunge. Let's put your back knee down on the ground for a moment and lift the heart up. Just feel the sense of opening around the chest. Big breaths here. All right, lift the back knee up off the ground. Rise up when you feel ready. Stretch your arms. If you can manage up, manage up today. If that's not good for your shoulders for whatever reason or your breath, then make a different choice. But see what you can do to expand yourself, to lift the heart to the sky, to feel that sense of open courage, that it's, you can look, you can look inward. You can feel that it's a courageous act to look inward. Release your hands down onto the ground, step back to dog pose. A deep breath in, full exhale. Becoming more and more acceptable for us to do the work of looking within. You know, many, many, many more people are accessing therapy, uh, looking at all sorts of different ways to understand ourselves, come forward into a plank. And any of the looking that you've done in your life toward yourself, is there anything you've ever regretted? Do you ever regret taking the time and energy to understand yourself better? I bet, I bet the answer is no, right? Even when it's hard, even when you don't want to look. We don't regret taking that effort and time. Okay, put your knees down when you feel ready. Roll the shoulders a couple of times. Feel that sense of awakening in the shoulder blades and turn it into a cobra when you're ready. Big open breath, exhale, and relax. Again, big open breath, lift your heart, relax, and melt back down. Up onto all fours, swish your spine about. Walk your hands forward, your knees slightly back. Drop your chest toward the ground, slightly lift under your armpits. So we're not going back towards child's pose. We're keeping the hips high and dropping the chest down. Just feel into the opening of the thoracic spine. Full breaths here. And then come back, walk your hands underneath you. Let's do a little bit of rib cage rolling. So a big circle be inside a tube. We're rolling and touching the inside of the tube. Go the other direction a couple of times. 
So you can feel all the mobility in your chest, in your ribs, in your back body. A lot of times when we're afraid to look at ourselves or others, we harden, we shrink, we disassociate, we get numb, we get stale. So allow the mobility that you're feeling give you that cue that all is well, that you can receive and give and be without uh, having to be afraid. Lift the left arm up in the air, big breath in, exhale, slide that shoulder down. Twisting open, feeling that sense of, uh, you know, a lot of times when we twist, there's a compression that happens. There's a restriction that happens. Breathe into the restriction. Give as much space as you can into this posture. And then inhale, lift that arm back up, hand comes down onto the ground. Second side, lifting the arm up. Exhale, sliding the arm under, gaze toward the ground. A big breath in, a big breath away. Inhale, reach the arm to the sky. Hand comes down onto the ground. Spread out the fingers. Wag your tail a little bit just to release the back and then lift to dog pose again. Feel into that extension in the body. So the yield and the push and reach. The heads of the femur bones, lift them up and back in the joints. And then walk your feet forward and come into Uttanasana. Bend your knees, rise up when you feel ready. And then let's pause in Tadasana for a moment. So everything that we've done so far, has it helped you to be embodied? Do you feel more present in this moment? Do you feel a little more open in your body, a little more free? A little more grounded, and most importantly, a little more present. Are you within the sensations of your body? Okay, let's take our legs wide on the mat. Turn your right toes out, Parsvo Konasana, elbow on your knee, stretch your arm overhead, and enjoy all the open space you can find. Root your feet. Now, femur bone in the back leg, see if you can draw the head of the femur bone back in the joints. Feel that extension and space. Keep your shoulders from creeping up, move them down your back. All right, and then relax that. Come back to center, over to the other side. Or, uh, sorry, Parzokanasana. Bend your elbow, elbow cut comes on your bent knee, I should say. You can always put your elbow on a block as well or your hand on a block. Reach your arm over your head. Now, if that doesn't feel good in your shoulder, try a different vector of movement with your shoulder. So find your way. The important thing we're looking for here is sense of space and length. This right femur bone, instead of pushing it forward, can you take the head of the femur bone back? Drop weight evenly into all four corners of both feet. Shoulders soft away from the ears. Can you still have that open feeling across your heart? All right, come back up. Feet are wide, turn your toes out, a very deep squat. We're lowering our torso down instead of being in goddess pose. Elbows inside knees, stretch open your inner thighs. Maybe rocking a little bit to and fro. All right, and then turn your feet straight. Put your hands uh, down onto the ground or block straight legs. Release your head downward. Feel that sense of an inversion where we can just drop our awareness into the breath, into the state of ease through our skull. All 
Okay, turn back to the front of your mat. Come on to all fours. We're going to take the forearms down onto the ground. You can stick a block between your hands if you want to, so your palms can be facing each other, or you can have your hands down. And you can put a block between your hands this way too, and just take your index finger and thumbs around the block. You don't have to use a block. It's just an option if you tend to cave in. All right, so wrists, elbows, and shoulders are all lined up. Lift up, dolphin pose. All right, heart lifting toward the pelvis. Feel the heads of the femur bones up and move back. Extend through the spine. Feel the openness through the chest. Keep the head and neck as relaxed as you can. So a lot of work in the shoulders and the rib cage. See if you can keep lifting your ribs up away from the ground. And then we're going to slowly walk our feet back to a forearm plank. Breathing well. And inhale and then exhale. Feel that sense of stability in your core. All right, and then relax and melt down. Soften. Release into child's pose. Find your breath. Now, if it's comfortable, have your two blocks in front of you. I have them on the low height. You can put them on the middle height if that's better. We're going to put our elbows on the blocks, palms together. Stay in child's pose and drop your thumbs toward your spine. You can curl your toes under or lay them flat, whichever feels good. Stretch open through your triceps. And then release, relax that. Hands back on the blocks. Feel free to move your tail around if you want to. Not everybody is able to do this, so just find uh, a plan B if you need to. We're gonna take our right foot forward, left knee is on the ground. Hand, right hand, so left hand can be on the block or floor, left uh, hand on the block, right hand reaches back to grab the left foot. If you can't do this, you can take any quad stretch that feels good. You can stand up and stretch your quad, or you can lie on your side and stretch your quad. So just find the pathway to open through the hip flexors and quadriceps combined if you can. Breathing well. Try not to collapse and fall. Shoulder blades down, knee hugs in. And then relax and melt. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Okay, our left foot is coming forward. Fine. And you can also just stay in the lunge, just like this without reaching back to grab. So whatever works, you can have your hand on the floor, that right hand on the floor or on the block. Left arm lifts up and swings behind you. Grab onto your foot. Try not to fall. Hug pressure from big toe into the ground. Keep your knee lined up. Find your breath. Hug your inner thighs toward each other. Hug your front knee and back, or front heel and back knee toward each other. Remember that proud open heart. All right, and then relax and find your way out. Okay, move your blocks out of the way. We're gonna come onto our belly for a full wheel or, you know, uh, Danyarasana, not over Danyarasana. So grab onto your ankles. Notice if your knees want to splay out. You can always wrap a strap around your ankles if you can't reach your feet. Tailbone descends toward knees, pubic bone lifts toward belly, knit your ribs in, find your core. Take a breath and lift everything up. Big, beautiful breaths here. All right, and then relax. Put your hands underneath your forehead and rock your feet left and right. Good 
come up on tall fours, swish around your spine. Take notice of how your back's feeling. We have two more back bends to go. Um, this next one and then a passive one. So we're gonna come into uh, camel pose and you can hold on to your sides if you want. And you can put your hands on your back. You can have your um, palms you know, facing down, fingers down. You can have them facing up. Lots of different choices. Press your shins into the ground, open your chest. Just a little hint of a pose here. We're gonna do it twice. So first, we're just getting a feel of this, lifting the heart up, finding the breath. Don't fling your head way back. Find the breath, elbows back. Okay, now hopefully that gave you a sense of where your back is. Now, if you feel like that's just enough for me, then that's where you're gonna stay. If you have a little bit more to give the posture, you can do things like you can curl your toes under and grab your heels. You can put blocks next to your legs and come down with your hands on the blocks. You can choose one arm up and one arm on the block and then switch. There are so many choices to make camel pose accessible. This is a very difficult pose for most people. Notice that you don't want to just have your head flinging back, okay? So find the uprightness of the heart, the shoulder blades supporting you. And once you get to where you're going to be, then feel like you can keep that hyoid bone drawn in. So the double chin yourself as you let your head fall back. So we're not just flinging our head back. Use the lift of your pubic bone, find your breath. Come out of the posture when you are done onto all fours. Wag your tail, okay, swish your spine. Maybe do um, a cat cow or some circling. Anything that gently, easily helps your back to relax. And the last back bend we're going to do is a more passive one and you have choices here as well. You can take a block on its lowest height in between the shoulder blades and just have that with your head back. Or you can have a block like this or like this in between your shoulder blades and another block under your head at, a, at the same height or a slightly higher height for heart bench. You can go middle and high height with blocks. You can go low and middle height with blocks. You can go low and low, whatever works for you. So we're finding a supported back bend. Maybe you don't like the blocks under your chest and you'd rather have a rolled blanket. So whatever feels good. Once you get into the position, whatever feels good in your arms. So sometimes it feels good to have your arms down or straight out to the side. Sometimes it feels good to grab onto the opposite elbow and stretch your arms overhead. Sometimes cactus arms feels good. Experiment with what's right for your body today, okay? So the goal here is to bring courage and openness into the heart. So much of what we uh, don't wanna look at, we might be able to look at if we felt a heart courage. So see what you can do to be aware of the breath. To open the heart space, feel all those little nooks and crannies of where your sternum and your ribs meet. Feel your collarbones free up, feel your diaphragm free up, feel your rib cage breathe. Any position you want with your legs. Melt something. For some people that pose is super comfortable and you want to stay all day. For others, it's painful and you can only stay for a little bit. So if you want to stay a little longer, stay a little longer. If you're ready to be done, go ahead and be done. 
We're going to find our way onto a flat back when you feel ready. And by all means, just stay put. You can always catch up. There's no rush. You're in your own practice. We're going to do reverse pigeon pose. So try to avoid pulling your knees into your chest just yet. Right foot on left knee. If you have a piece of furniture, you can rest your left foot on the furniture so your upper body can just melt into the floor. A full breath here. Feel a sense of softness come over you. Wide sit bones. Melt the chest. All the ways that you just you know, did a lot of openings start to begin to soften here. Change sides when you feel ready. Left knee, left foot on right knee. Now notice, pay attention to yourself. You know, do you hike up one hip toward your shoulder when you do this? Do you kind of tip over to one side? Try to find balance across your pelvis. The heaviness in your head. Our asana practice helps us to have that sense of um, discernment in the body where we can really parse out how we feel. We become intelligent in the mind body, mind emotion body, which is a real gift when we're trying to study self, to understand our emotional states within our body it is truly a gift. All right, bring your knees into your chest now. Rock a little bit, swaying from side to side. And then we're going to put our feet down onto the ground. Lift your hips and scoot them over to the right. Knees come up and drop to the left and let your thoracic spine just free up in a twist. So deep inhale, full exhale. And back up, scoot your hips over to the other side. Knees come up and drop to the right. Turn your head in opposition if it feels comfy to do so. your legs back up. If there's anything else you need, like a happy baby pose or chin chest, whatever you need to nourish yourself before Shavasana. Okay, so as you find Shavasana, any support that you need. So blankets, anything at all. So if you are cold, cover yourself. If you have an eye pillow, you can use that. Now, with all this hard space opening, when you begin to settle, see if you can settle with the, art, with the heart feeling free that we're not closing ourselves down in Savasana, but we are opening ourselves up.
Slowly begin to invite movement into your body. Bring your side as you feel ready. As you come to a comfortable seat, can you feel the gift of presence within yourself that your practice gives us when we when we step onto the mat and we have our asana practice and this breath and presence? Can you find that you are a little closer to peeling away some of those layers? where the truth of your nature shines. And from this place of divinity, can you offer your energy, meeting someone else in the same place, you know, the, the word um, namaste that we say at the end has this deeper meaning, meaning just hello and provides the deep light, the divine consciousness, the purity in me meets and honors the same within you. So can you, when you send this energy, send it from that place. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. I wanted to um, just give credit. I, I keep forgetting to do this. I've read a book called The Yamas and the Niyamas by Deborah Adele. Um, and the little exercise that we did today um, of you know looking at the world through in, in five things, that comes from her. A lot of what I've learned about the Yamas and the um, Niyamas come from her book. So I highly recommend it. It's a simple read. Um, if you're, you know, need just one more book on your bookshelf to read. <laughs> All right. Thanks.